about how to overcome oppression. Now, there's a difference between oppression and possession. Now, possession is when somebody is demon possessed. They cannot control themselves. They possess, like that movie you saw in Exorcist, <laughs> Linda Blair. Now, they said that was a true story, but it was actually a boy that was actually possessed in real life. But that goes on every day. I, my first encounter with someone being possessed when I was 18 years old, I told the story on last week. When she was 28 years old, and she had four demons. And she was shouting just like a man. Demons are real. Devils are real. Evil spirits are real. If God is real, the devil is real. But God got more power than the devil. Now, if you are a child of God, and you're saved, and you have Jesus in your heart, you cannot be possessed. Because Jesus is living on the inside of you. Hallelujah! That's why he said, great says he that's within you, that he that is in the world. So you cannot be possessed by a demon, because Jesus is there. But you can be oppressed. It's a difference. Oppression is when the devil fights your mind. He know he cannot get on the inside because Jesus is there. So he wants to get to the mind to torment your mind and put depressed thoughts in your mind. He fights my mind every day. Especially me being the preacher. Just last night, the devil came in the form of a, a cobra, a snake, last night when I was asleep. Then he used some witches in my family to work stuff against me. And they in New York City, they're seeing the spirits out. And I said, the blood of Jesus, I plead the blood, that's that demon. Because he wanted to try to distract you to keep your mind on Jesus. This is why the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians chapter number 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Notice he said, be strong in the Lord. Not in your own strength, but be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God, the whole armor, not half the armor, the whole armor. <laughs> that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. These are unseen demon forces that we are wrestling with. God bless you, young man of God. I'm happy to see you today. Tell someone you're too blessed to be stressed. Blessed to be stressed. Amen. You're too anointed to be disappointed. I thank God for you today because the devil fights our minds every day. The devil puts suicidal thoughts in our minds, especially when we go and do something in relationships or on the job and you're going to do a financial problem. The devil will tell you to give up. So you must talk back to the demon of depression and tell the devil, I came too far to turn back now. I'm not giving up. There was a young man one time in church who committed suicide. He was a, a piano player. And he allowed the demons of depression to get to him. God bless your man of God. And he took a gun. You're going to have a blessed day. I thank God you're here today. God, thank God for you and your wife. God heal her, his wife in the wheelchair. When we prayed right here. She's out in the wheelchair now. God is still working miracles. I told her before the month is over, she's going to be walking out that wheelchair. Now she's walking, don't need no wheelchair. Hallelujah, my high to the God be the glory. God is still working miracles. How do you deal with the demons of depression? I, I rather oppression. Depression is also part of oppression. They work together. Can I teach this thing? That's why the Bible talks about putting on the helmet of salvation. It goes on top of the what? The head. Spiritually, it goes on your mind because the devil wants to oppress the mind. There are different forms of oppression. He fights with nightmares. Now, he may try to bring back flashbacks from when you got molested when you was a girl. Yeah, come on. And even though you're saved, but the flashbacks come back because that was a terrible experience that you went through. He wants to make you feel like you're dirty. He wants to make you feel like you're not worth anything. But it's not your fault that you got molested. It's not your fault that you got raped. So stop blaming yourself for being molested. Oh, hallelujah. You are special to God. Oh, no, my high
He loves you with everlasting love. He said, I come to heal your broken heart. You don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, there's no room for a drug overdose. Ha! I feel Jesus. All of my heart, you most such. How do you fight oppression? By giving God praise. By giving God praise, because the devil cannot stand praise, because he knows that the joy, he knows that the joy of the Lord is your strength. David said, I learned how to encourage myself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to preach to yourself. Sometimes you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, if God be for me, if God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. That's how you fight against the spirits of oppression and depression. You got to talk back to it. All right now. Now I'm a 13 years old woman of God. The devil told me to jump off the roof. That's what he told me. I heard his voice. You know why I told the devil? You jump off the roof. I know you're immortal, you can't die, but you jump off the roof. My life is worth living because Jesus lived. And because Jesus lived, I can face a day and tomorrow. Because Jesus lived, you can make it. You got to talk back to the demon of depression. You got to talk back to it. You must be determined to live. You say, I shall live and not die. Yes, the body may die one day, but the spirit lives on and goes to be with Jesus. You must be determined to keep your joy. The devil fights against us on our jobs, in our homes, through our landlords. Because he don't want us to be happy. He wants you to walk around miserable. It's a fight to keep your joy. You got to be determined to keep your joy. Don't let nobody make you lose your joy. If you're going to talk to yourself and say, I'm too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. I'm going to keep living holy no matter what. I'm going to keep on living for Jesus, no matter who don't like me. If family turn against me, that's all right. Because Jesus is my best friend. Oh, I feel Jesus who shook his closer and then a brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I had my own mother doing this crap against me. You know I love her. Came in this world being choked by demons. They had to put me in a mental institution when I was 14 years old because they could not get the demons off me. The devil tried to write 666 on my forehead when I was a little boy. They didn't know what was wrong with me. The devil was trying to destroy me ever since I was a baby because the devil knew my destiny. He said, I got to try to stop this young man right now before he walk into his destiny. But let me tell you something. The devil cannot stop your destiny. I don't care if you got molested out of reach. And God will jump like a rider and heal you because God said, I've ordained you. I put a mark upon you and you are chosen by God. Oh, hallelujah. The devil didn't try to stop your destiny. The devil didn't try to use your family to stop your destiny. You got enemies in your own family that been trying to oppress you. Sometimes there's enemies in your family who's even worse than ones outside of your family. Because Jesus said that a man's household shall be his own foes. But God said, that's all right. Yes, that's all right. God said, I'm for you. I had to forgive my mother, I had to forgive my enemies, but it does not mean to connect with them because if they reprobate it and don't want to change, I have to separate myself from people who doesn't love Jesus. Sometimes you get to separate, so that's come out from among them. Be separated. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Can we just serve the Lord? There's a lot of things you got to give up. Give up that old boyfriend. We don't want to be saved. Oh yes, he may be handsome, but he don't love Jesus. Come on, what you say? Give her that old girlfriend who don't want to be saved. You can say to her, you may be fine, but you ain't going to be mine. Because Jesus is mine. There's a lot of folk putting their girlfriends and their boyfriends above Jesus. And God said, I'm a jealous God. And thou shall not have no other God before me. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. God come first. You'd be surprised when you put God first, God will bless you. Will you seek ye first the kingdom of God huh? and I'm a higher Mosat, huh? and all his righteousness huh? and then all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, I had enemies in my own family. I have enemies even in the church. Everybody who go to church don't mean they say you got jealous folk in the church, you got gossipers in the church, you got pimps in the pulpit. I'm not saying everybody is a hypocrite. There's those who live holy. 
And my Lord's attacks came from church. I got my Lord's oppression from church because when you are anointed by God, especially dealing with black folks, we fight against each other. We're envious of each other. Even in the black African American churches, they won't let you be anointed in peace. If they know you got an anointing, they'll stop you in the back. They want to get you out the church because they are intimidated. Those are folk who are not saved. They pray in church. They pray in church. Yeah! But those who love Jesus, they don't pray in church. They're not competitive. They're not jealous. All they want to do is please Jesus. They're not trying to win a Hollywood contest. They're not trying to be the most popular one. They're not trying to win no popularity contest. All I want to do is please Jesus. Come on, church. I just want to please Jesus. These are old presses who just get just intimidated. But they cannot get rid of you. Because David said promotion does not come from east, west, south, I north, but it comes from above. Saul tried to stop David, but he couldn't do it. He put a hit on David's life because he was envious and jealous of Saul. I rather of David. And the name David mean beloved one. He was jealous. He tried to stop David's destiny, but he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. God wiped out Saul. Actually, he actually wiped him all, his own self out. He even went to the witch of Endor. But the witchcraft cannot work on a child of God. You cannot curse who God has blessed. Whoa! I feel the anointing on that. Who God has blessed, no man can curse. Whoa! Praise the Lord. God bless the man of God. I'm happy to see you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They can't curse who God has blessed. I don't care they give you evil looks. Our evil stands. They can't curse who God has blessed. It'll backfire. That's why they're going through stuff. Cause they always gonna, why? Cause they always gonna put a curse on you. And the pit they dig for you, they're gonna fall in their own pit. Haman had a pit. Haman had a noose for Mordecai. And thank God for Queen Esther. The name Esther means star. God used Esther to expose Haman. Cause he was wicked. Cause he wanted to kill the Jews. And the noose that Haman had for Mordecai. Haman was hung on his own noose. Whoa, God said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. i make you above only and not beneath. Oh, thank you, Jesus, when you walk up right before God. No good thing he will withhold from you. When you walk up right before God and live a holy life, he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. i make you above only and not beneath. You don't got to worry. Oh, my high